Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Matters of the Heart and Soul podcast. Uh, this is Janie and Russ, so welcome back. Hello everybody out there. All right, guys. So we are literally a few days before Thanksgiving, right before the holidays. So this podcast is about planting seeds for harvest. OK, um, we're going to talk about our seasons, especially seasons in our life. And we have to know when to plant so that we could reap a good harvest. Um, as you know, we like to base these topics on laws of nature, you know, laws that govern all dimensions of existence. So the law that fits in here is the law of cause and effect. And that law says for every cause, there is an effect. And for every effect, there's a cause. The scripture that goes with that basically is whatever a man sows, so shall he also reap right? So this is what this podcast is about. It's about knowing our seasons and planting so that we could have a good harvest. Just like right now, it is a, is harvest season, all right? Which is why we're going to be around our family. We're going to be exchanging gifts. We're going to be, you know, eating good food because it's harvest season. Everything that we've worked through through this year is now to gather that and prepare for the, for the winter, basically. So, you want to add anything to that before we move on to our tools? Most definitely. So in, in this culture, Thanksgiving, also known as the, the harvest, right? This fall harvest is just basically a culmination of things that were planted, say, in the spring and prepped for even prior to that. And going into the winter months, most people, depending on where you're living in this country, outside of, say, Florida, California areas, uh, mostly all the the leaves are turning brown and different colors and falling off the tree. The grass is browning up and plant life. Right. So if you're planting, say, beans, corn, uh, watermelon, things of that nature, that season for the most part is pretty much come to an end and going into the winter seasons, this is when they would take a lot of these fruits, vegetables, beans, and do a lot of canning and things of that nature to prep for the winter. And, you know, those cultures that, you know, hunt and fish or whatever, this was a season where they would probably tend to, to eat more meats and, and fishes and so forth because there's not going to be as plentiful fruits and vegetables. But it also rolls over, like she said, into other aspects of life, right? So this is also a harvest season for humanity. You know, mm -hmm. we, we've we gone through um, thousands of years of, of evolving evolution. And I think we're at a very pivotal time in human history you know, almost like a judgment day. If you look, things that we we're making decisions for are pretty much like life and death. Where as before, you know, it, it wasn't as detrimental. Yeah. But we'll we'll talk about some other things. Yeah, before. we'll break all of that down. So the first tool I want to talk about is be in tune with your seasons, right? There is a planting season and there is a reaping season or a harvest season. So you have to be in tune with your season. Are you in a growth season? Are you in a transformational season? Are you in a harvest season? Are you in your reaping season? So you have to know what season you are actually in and you have to be in tune with that. And I recommend paying a lot of attention to nature because nature will teach you. All right. Because, you know, we're not going to really plant our beautiful flowers in the middle of the winter because they will die. Right. The climate is not is just not conducive for them to grow. It's cold. There's not a lot of sun. You know, we can go many days without sunlight. It's cloudy. So the flowers would not grow. So you want to align with what the overall flow of this earth is in number one, and you have to know which seasons you are in personally as well and align that. Yeah. So it, and it even goes back to why people like say like Benjamin Banneker creating the almanac, why the study of astronomy and cosmology are so important. Like living here on this earth over thousands of years, people would study the sun, moons, and stars, and they seen the cyclical nature of seasons and so forth. 
to learn when to plant and when to harvest, you know? So that's why it was so important to know your relationship with the stars through astronomy and your relationship with the earth through cosmology. And that actually, that's actually another law of nature, the law of rhythm, because we, we are in rhythms, right? There's rhythms of the earth, there's rhythms of seasons. So we have to know the rhythms that we're in, the rhythm and go with the flow of that. Because sometimes if we try to go against that, we suffer, right? So the law of rhythm is about timing. It's all about timing. It's about the seasons. Thanks. So knowing that. And it's this time. Yeah, okay. exactly. Harvest season. So the second tool I want to say is plant seeds in all areas of your life so that you can harvest in all areas of your life. And we're going to break that down mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, because if you're not planting in all areas of your life, you're not going to be able to harvest. All right. So let's start, first of all, with physical. All right. The things that you do physically now in your 20s, 30s is going to be what you harvest physically in your 50s and 60s. So those healthy habits that you start right now is what you're going to reap, the body you're going to have, the health you're going to have in your 50s and 60s. All right. So when you're not so good to your body and you're not so, you know, you don't take your health as a priority, you're going to reap that eventually you're going to harvest that. Yeah, and I can say personally myself, uh, just a week, how long ago, a couple on the eleventh, just yeah. uh, celebrated my sixtieth solar return. So, as a child, and even up to today, I've always been on someone's baseball field, basketball court, playing football. I've always been very active in sports, even through college, after school, after college. I still continued to play ball like three days a week, all the way up into my 50s. So therefore, I gave my health this very great jump start, right? So I was constantly exercising, working out, and it's pretty much turned into a way of life for me. So I'm still today at 60, still going to the gym consistently. So it, it's a way of life. It's not like I fall off for two, three years and get back in the gym. I've never done that, right? So at 60, I'm in great health, never been on any meds, anything like that. All my body parts are still intact. I have no zippers on my body where I've had to have anything cut out. Everything works. And to hear some of these stories of younger men, like we were actually talking yesterday, Michael Bazin had a post where he was talking about uh, men with ER ED. ED, excuse mm -hmm. me. E -E no, they're going to ER because of ED. Right? <laughs> yeah, so, ED. but yeah, they had ED. And, and for whoever don't know what that is, that is erectile dysfunction. Yeah, your yeah. man, man is a little weak, right? So, but the thing is, you're starting to hear these stories of men in their 30s and their 40s struggling with this when it's something that's tied to diet and lifestyle. You know, so knowing that you need to eat more fruits, vegetables, drink more clean water, you know, get more exercise because it's all about keeping your bloodstream clean, right? The blood flow. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's like the, the water of your body. You want to keep those rivers clean and that blood goes to your brain, to your other extremities and and definitely to your private parts. So. You know, those are things that that men definitely need to pay attention. Women, too. But just speaking from a man's standpoint, those are things that, you know, early on in life, if you're living these reckless lifestyles, drinking a lot of liquor and eating fatty foods and things of that nature, you know, it's like they're going to wreak havoc on you. You're going to end up with high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes. You're going to be on medication. And those things are going to affect your libido. So uh, cleaning up your diet and things like that when you're younger, when you're older, it makes it easier. And it's not a death sentence if you're older now and you have those issues. Clean your diet up and start prepping for the next five, 10 years of your life. Yep. And it's true. What, what you put into practice now, like I said, 20s, 30s, 
40s, you will you will reap that into your 50s, 60s, 70s. OK, and what I want to just um, talk a little bit from the feminine side, uh, women, you know, most women are not in tune with the four weeks of their menstrual cycle. And that's because um, birth control, you know, hormonal both birth control have have been a part of women's life up until they're 50 and 50, I say 40, 50 years old. So most women don't even know the natural cycle of those four weeks. And women literally go through a, a summer, you know, a spring, a winter, and a fall in one month every single week. But when you get in tune with that and you get in your natural flow, you know the seasons each week, you go with that and you take advantage of that, okay? There's gonna be a time that this week is amazing. It's your summertime, right? You're hot, you you know, you know, wanna do things. And then you're gonna get into that fall where it slows down and winter, that cycle's on. A amen. They have a hot girl summer <laughs> once a month. And you need to know when it is. You so. should know when it is and ladies you gotta know so that you could teach your man right Be but I say this most women I would probably say 90 percent don't know because of hormonal birth control we don't we have been under under disguise of hormones and then uh what Russell was talking about with ED you know there's a lot out here of women suffering going through perimenopause and menopause and I, I believe, and, and I, I believe this wholeheartedly that the prime creator doesn't put a pause in the menses of women if there was not a reason. And when I started to kind of go deeper into this spiritually, I realized that it's a pause so that women can get into their queen status and awaken to that if she had not already done that, okay? So, but... In this country, in the United States, you know, menopause gets a terrible rap and, I, and women don't talk about it. You know, no one talks about it. But I believe you can go through these stages beautifully, gracefully. Right. Uh, so I just think that but you have to naturally know, because when you hit menopause, if you've never naturally known your body week by week by week, knowing when you ovulate, knowing all these things, you won't naturally know what's shifting and what's changing and how to prepare for it. So that's physically. Yeah. So, yeah. And just to wrap that up, just knowing the seasons that no one you know seasons. your winners don't have to be a death sentence and you could make your winners your summer if you know what you're dealing with and how to prepare for them. exactly so you know know your seasons get in tune remember the the mother earth is nature we got to get in tune with that flow okay so know that all right mentally all right how do we plant good seeds mentally so that we could harvest good things later right so this is all those positive thoughts i tell people you really do have to have a um a radical mindset of positivity does that mean that you turn a blind eye to the suffering in this country no but it means that despite the suffering you keep a positive outlook you see the good in all of it OK, because what I do know is that the prime creator creates all of it, the good and the bad. But we have to have a radical mindset of positivity and good thoughts in order to harvest the good of our thoughts as well. Yeah. And as scripture says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he or she. Right. So it's everything starts into in the mental, spiritual plane and it starts with a thought. And these thoughts have quantitative values and they turn into things. So if you think about the greatest things that have ever happened in this world and the worst things, they started in somebody's mind as a thought. Yeah. And then they manifest into the physical. Just like if we say this all the time, you can look around a room, you see chairs, tables, television, you see homes, walls. These were all thoughts inside someone's brain. They wrote it down on paper, created a blueprint, and manifested it in the physical reality. Yeah. So thoughts are things, and thoughts are the seeds 
that, that you're planting. Exactly. That's right. So what about emotional? I think this is an important one because our emotions is our energy in motion. So we don't even realize that we're planting seeds with the emotions we carry in our body every day. So if you wake up day after day after day with this very solemn outlook on life, you know, very negative, you know, whether it's anger, whether it's regret, whether you're living in, you know, um, uh, guilt and shame, these are the emotions that you are also going to harvest. You're going to attract that back to you situation after situation after situation with those same emotions. And um, I want you to talk about husbandry as well, because that has a lot to do with emotions and energy and emotion and planting that and harvesting good, good things emotionally. Yeah. So just touching back on what you said, emotion is energy in motion. So it's like whatever those seeded thoughts are and you package them in an emotion and we always say there's two real emotions in this universe love and fear that's right and everything else is just a derivative of the other like are you doing it out of love or out of fear right so you plant the seed in order to get to manifestation there has to be some care taken and some cultivation in between. And that's where like, if you go out back and you have a garden in your yard or, you know, a farmer, you know, it's referred to as husbandry, maintaining and cultivating and managing the plants, right? If you go and look up the term husbandry is rooted in that. The, the husband was the manager of the plants and the animals. And then later that term was used in human beings because we came out of an agricultural society where, you know, most of your ancestors, if you do your genealogy, they were farmers. And so they were into husbandry. And that's where the man was listed as a husband because he was the manager of the family and the caretaker, you know, the provider and the cultivator to pluck the weeds out away from his beautiful plants to keep them from harm and to help them grow, right? And in speaking, once again, going back to the health tip, we are no different than plants, right? Plants need three major things to survive. They need sunlight, they need water, and they need minerals. That's where the soil, you get minerally rich soil and you put the plant in those three things and they thrive, right? In a proper environment. And we're no different. We're just blessed to be able to move about and we're not stuck in the soil, even though grounding is very good. You can take your shoes off and go stand out there in the dirt. And most of our ancestors who were farmers, that's why they were living 80, 90, 100 years. And just were, even your hands yeah, your in hands. the soil is grounding too. Yeah, the sole of your mm. hands, the sole of your feet connecting with the soil to get the electrons flowing through your body you know, eliminates a lot of the inflammation, which most diseases, nurse here could tell you about inflammation, but yeah, we need to all, both men and women, like wives are really just the feminine version of a husband. We have to be nurturers and caretakers of our our plants, our children, exactly. our plants, our seeds, our, our homes, everything. Everything. We'll get into relationships. Um. So uh, what about spiritual? What about planting seeds that you could, good seeds to harvest on the spiritual realm? Yeah. So it's your whole mental, spiritual, that invisible plane is that spirit realm, right? You know, it's like we see empty space between like if you look where you're wherever you're at like in between you the wall the next person people used to always just think that this was just empty space right but it's not it's like this plasma reality this energetically charged like you hear some people in the spiritual realm talk about prana right because you could breathe it in and they say that God breathed within man gave him the breath but that's where that spiritual energy is it energetic Feel. And if you don't believe it, when you send a text, like if I was to text a picture from this phone to Janie's phone, there's no wires connecting it. It goes in this charged atmosphere 
and then it hits some type of receiver and then that will encapsulate, decapsulate, and then ultimately go to our phone. So this reality, you're walking through Wi-Fi waves, you're walking through microwaves, mm -hmm. radio, you're walking through this cosmic go Which is a lot, is waves, which is right. energy, which is spirit. And you got to understand that when you want to plant good seeds, there is um there's there's levels of these waves or what we call frequencies right and love is that highest divine frequency that binds all this together so when you're planting seeds spiritually you want to do it out of love not fear right cuz russell just said there's two main emotions in I believe that to be true. You want to do it out of love, out of kindness, you know, out of joy, out of peace. And when you plant that, when you're doing your activities, because there's a difference when you are, let's say, making a plate for your husband and you're doing it with love versus you're making a plate for your husband and you're doing it out of, you know, regret or, you know, feeling like it's a duty or it's, it's you know, remorse or whatever emotion other than love that's what you're going to reap back to yourself. So our harvest back to yourself. So when we're doing our day in, day out tasks, the most mundane task, do it out of love, out of peace, out of joy. Okay. Because you're going to reap that back. And I'm talking about the most mundane, washing the dishes, cooking a meal, taking your child to school, because those mundane tasks are the tasks that's going to challenge you the most. And that's where you're going to plant those seeds because that's where your emotions are while you're doing it. So I hope I made that connection clear. Yeah. And that ties back into something else that we said recently. And we may have even spoken about this on a podcast and you could Google this. There was a study done by Dr. Yamoto and Yamoto. It, it showed up in a documentary from years back called What the Bleep where Dr. Yamoto did this study on water, right? Mm -hmm. And he would show that water carries memory and vibration and talking into the water, like saying things like, you're beautiful, you're amazing, you're things like that. And they would take that water and they would freeze it. So when it crystallizes it and it crystallizes and they put it under a microscope, just like how you see patterns of a snowflake, right? it would have these beautiful patterns. But if you turn around and said, you're ugly, I hate you and said negative things, right? Then the water would have these distorted patterns when they froze it. So now the human body is composed of 70 plus percent water. The woman carries more water. That's why, you know, the moon's tied to tidal, uh, tidal waves and there's 28 days that the moon goes around the earth and you have the moon astral menstrual cycle tied to women. That's another story, but water, right? So your food, your fruits, vegetables, meats, they have either blood, water, something in it, some form of liquid in it. So that's why when you pray, all right, and take religion out of it and just think pure science and what I'm saying, when you're praying, you're not begging, you're not doing, you're, you're commanding, commanding to your food, absolutely to, to strengthen your body, to heal your body, to do all these things, right? Because you're talking to the water molecules within your food and you're commanding it. And when you eat it, it's crystallizing and doing different things in your body. So if you are one who always eats out at restaurants, not only are you planting seeds of bad health in the sense that you don't know what oils, fats, sugars, salts, whatever they're using to put in these foods. And nine times out of 10, most major restaurants or whatever, they're for profit. So they're going to get the cheapest oils, cheapest salts, the cheapest butter. You probably eat in margarine, things like that, that are going to affect your health. But you're also at the mercy of the person that's preparing your food. That's so true. if they had a bad day at home and they come to work with that negative energy and they're sitting there, you see, I flip my food and they're sitting there flipping their food and they're mad at their spouse, the boss or whatever, that energy is going into this food. And when it gets to your table, it looks pretty, 
but because you don't see it under a microscope when you put it in your body the effect it has and not only that we can go all the way back to the beginning i had this uh conversation this morning with my son when we had breakfast i was teaching him about the difference between like halal food and kosher food mm -hmm. within islamic and in jewish communities like how they the way the animals actually slaughtered plays a major role right like like with halal food and and with kosher food they slit the throat of the sheep or the, the cow or whatever from left to right and it just bleeds out as if it's going to sleep whereas here in western society you, you'll see pictures and sometimes they'll pray over that and they'll that pray they will yeah they'll soul, pray over yeah. at the same time right and then here in the western society you'll see them clubbing animals over the head wringing the necks doing all that they're putting the animal through trauma and that goes into the blood mm -hmm. and that ultimately you're ingesting it and you're taking on that same stress. And now you don't know why you have high blood pressure, diabetes, impotence, like all of these things, because all of these seeds, whether they're mental, spiritual, or physical come harvest time, it's going to all play out. Yeah. So that's why it's so important. Yeah. Um, I want to mention relationships, all right, um, planting seeds in our relationships so that we harvest good from it, right? So that we have a good harvest. And this is our children. This is our significant other. This is, you know, our work relationships, our siblings, whatever, all relationships. Um, you, you really want to take time to plant what you want to reap or harvest from that relationship, okay? Because whatever you put into it is what you're gonna take out of it every single time. So let's just talk about our kids, you know? Kids are so important. They are seeds. They already, they are seeds and they are already here to do, they have their own purpose. And it is our job as parents, like Russell said, to nurture, to provide that mineral, provide the water, provide to, you know, give everything we need so that when it's time for them to move on and go onto their own purpose, they're ready. They have gotten the husbandry that they needed right? And sometimes it it don't always look the same, right? Sometimes it has to be tough love for that child. Sometimes it has to be, you know, some punishment. Some, but you are having to provide that, that, that those seeds and plant that so that when that child is in full bloom, you'll be able to see what you planted there. And that's so, yeah, come harvest time. And trust me, Harvest, like we're collectively in a harvest time because this is the season of where we're at, right, in this country. But everybody also has their individual harvest time, okay? And sometimes, you know, souls are harvested and have to go back through the recycle as well. So keep that in mind. But spouses, work relationships, all relationships, what are you planting there? Right, because that's important. Is what you're gonna is what you're gonna harvest. Did you want to add anything to that? Well, I was just thinking out loud. Like, you just see some people. Their frustration is is during a time in which it was planting season. They weren't planting, and yeah. then when it comes harvest time, now they want to plant, and it's too late to plant. So, and it's really just planting, right? So it's like planning is the root word of planting right exactly so it's like and if you do not plan if you do not if you fail to plan you plan to fail yeah and and that's what you see a lot of people doing in all aspects of life we sometimes wait till it's too late to start doing things we were supposed to do on the front end and then even with relationships you that's why you see a lot of times people they want the ready-made man or the ready-made woman. Like they don't want to work together to build anything together. They want that person to already have everything and, you know, and they should have the internal things, but sometimes mm -hmm. the, the physical things, those are things that, you know, people coming together, you could do it a lot quicker than you can solo. So, yeah.
And before we move on to our um, our last tool, I want to talk about planting financial seeds. It's important, okay? It's so important. You know, what you plant in your 20s and 30s will be the financial harvest of your 50s, 60s, and 70s, all right? So, you know, take it upon yourself to plant those seeds. And we have to we have to understand that things do take time. We do have to live in the present, but we have to plant. The subconscious mind is all about planting, right? Because it's it's really the unseen. When we plant seeds in the ground, it's underneath, it's dark. That's, you know, it's dark, it's getting the minerals, it's getting that husbandry, it's getting every all the things it needs. And then after a while, it, that plant starts to, to come out and then that beautiful flower comes. So it takes time, right? So the seeds you plant in your young years, and as young as you could start, start, start that financial seed so that you could have a good financial harvest when it's time. Okay. Anything you want to add to that? No, that's, that's like, like, for example, a lot of people, like when it comes to things like in investments, like school doesn't teach you how to be independent. It's Agreed. Not, yeah, they're never going to teach you uh, about all the different investment strategies and, you know, how to buy a home, the importance of credit, like mm -hmm. all those things. But these are things that you could teach yourself, right? Yeah. Or if somebody in the home knows to to teach to the children so that they can start investing earlier, right? I seen something the other day, one of my friends had posted about if you would have invested, say, what's it, a dollar or say a hundred dollars in uh, Bitcoin back when it first mm -hmm. jumped off, say 19, 20 years ago, today it would have been worth over a million dollars, you know? So those long-term investments where you could put money into things and just sit and allow them to grow, um, and that's just one avenue. There's so many different ones. Yeah. And there's, there's so many ways, right? There's so many things that we can create and, and learn to create generational wealth. And um, it's not always just money, you know, um, wealth and abundance and prosperity comes in so many forms, so many forms, right? And if you come from a where you've had to change that mindset from lack to abundance, you've really had to, to plant so that you could harvest, right? So that's another thing. Just make sure you are planting financially so that when harvest season come, you're, you're getting that. It's yours to have, all right? So moving on to our third tool that we want to talk about is that during harvest season is when we gather and we prepare, all right? So what this means is that we're gathering everything, right? Like right now is Thanksgiving. So we would gather our vegetables. We would gather everything that we've planted through the spring and the summer so that we could prepare for the winter, all right? Because we know that it may be a season that's coming that we are gonna have to use what we have, all right? It may be a time where we may not be able to go out and get. We have to use what we have. So this is a time where you have to position yourself, right? For what's coming. Use what you already have, position yourself, right? Um, physically, let me talk about that. This is flu and respiratory season. Go ahead and get your immune system together, right? Start taking your vitamins, your minerals, start drinking your teas, start having things at your home, okay, that you may need. You may need a thermometer, you may need Tylenol. Have those things at your home, prepare for this season ahead, all right? That's physically, that's just one thing. Yeah, because we know that the season is here. So it's like in... Once again, like I was saying, how Benjamin Banneker and others created almanacs, like by studying the time so they knew when to exactly. plant, you know, they knew when harvest season was, right? So it's like knowing that every year these things happen, we need to quit being so reactionary 
if that's a word, reacting mm -hmm. and, it is. and to be more proactive, right? Get ahead of these things. Like, exactly. If you know that this season's coming, you should be building up your immune system with your vitamin C's and your zinc and all these different things that make the immune system strong, right? Then that way you don't have to worry about it. Or if you believe in going out, getting the Jabberwocky, <laughs> And hoping that these things are are, are going to keep you safe, then you know do do what you have to. Nobody's judging you, but if you want to live a more natural life and for longevity, the, the more natural, the better, right? Mm -hmm. And I always refer back to the Amish Dutch, right? I went to college in an Amish Dutch community, so I was able to observe them from from afar, but. I was able to observe a community that is so self-sufficient and they're outside of this matrix that we live in, right? So it's like they do their own farming, they have their own systems of living. And even like <laughs> the election just passed, they don't give a damn because it's like they have plan A and plan B all in check because the first plan of business is self-preservation. They're going to be good when the power goes out. They're going to be good when the rest of the people can't get to the uh, grocery store because it's shut down, because the trucks and distribution, all this stuff shuts down. They're self-sufficient. Most people's problem is we planted a seed of this matrix where we're caught up into this material reality. And today we are actually harvesting or we're we're reaping what we have sown as a society yeah so it, and that's that's so true on all levels like mentally right we're seeing mental health at an all-time high and we're reaping that because we have gotten so far from taking care of our thoughts being in tune with who we are being in tune with our emotions we've gotten so far into material that if you don't have that in your life, you break down, you suffer, you have a mental breakdown. And we have to, we have to really correct all that. So during harvest season, prepare, right? Start putting your, your stash away because we know the next season is winter. Okay. We know it's winter. So spiritually, I want to mention Stay prayed up, okay? Have your own direct relationship with the most high creator, the prime creator, the one, all right? You have your own relationship and you don't need a in-between. You could create that direct relationship. So that's important. Yeah, uh, Yeshua said that the kingdom is within yeah. In you. And so if that's true, right, any good preacher, teacher, leader, guy is going to teach you that it's within you. So quit looking for somebody to come save you or change your condition. You should see that person when you look in the mirror. And, you know, once again, I'd say vote for yourself to become the president of your own corporation yep. and manage your own business so that it's fail proof regardless of, of who's in office or who's on the throne, make sure that you have your life in order. That's it. That's you, it. Because you choose whether or not you bring up, because it was all to bring the kingdom here on earth, you know, and it's like, we keep waiting to die to go somewhere. And, and while other people are at your expense, living heaven on earth, you can live heaven on earth, create your own reality plant the, your own seeds of, of righteousness and love and harmony and peace, and then watch your own creativity come alive and you can create a world for yourself and a better world for yourself and for other people. And when that harvest season comes, you just sit back and receive because you've done the work. You've planted the seeds, you put in the work, you cared for it, you provide the sunshine, the water, the minerals, and now you have a beautiful harvest and you have enough in case there's a harsh winter season up ahead. You, there's no fear because you have enough. You've planted enough in all areas of your life. So 
that's it, guys. We're going to call it an end. Did you have anything else you want to add? That's it. All right. So just a recap, our three tools, okay? Um, be in tune with your seasons. That's so important. Be in tune with your seasons. Plant seeds in all areas of your life so that you can harvest in all areas of your life. All right. And then the third is when you're in harvest season, prepare for the next, prepare for what's coming. All right. Don't just take all your harvest and give it all away or eat it all up or, you know, lose it. You got to prepare for the next. All right. Enjoy your harvest, but prepare for the next. And that's it, guys. This has been another episode of Matters of the Heart and Soul podcast, Janie Charlo and Russell Bruce. And uh, we appreciate you guys. Happy holidays. Happy harvest season. Um, enjoy this time with your family. And we'll catch you guys next time. Take care. Peace.